There has been so much talk in the past month about the lack of inclusion and diversity in big corporations in America, and that topic has really hit home for the running community this week. So let's talk runner's world so white, but are we really surprised? And why do we even care? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Run Wave Podcast. I am your host, Kim. If this is your first time here, welcome to the show. If you are a return listener, welcome back to the show. I truly appreciate you. There has been quite an uproar in the running community in the past two weeks on the lack of diversity on the Runner's World magazine covers. On June 25th, a podcast called Keeping Track posted on their IG account, Keep Track Media, a post entitled Representation Matters. Now on that post, they had three slides of magazine covers from Runner's World, Canadian Running, and women's running and the covers range from the years 2009 to 2018. They did their own research on the covers of these magazines to determine how many people of color were featured on the covers. Runner's World had 14.8% BIPOC, which is Black Indigenous People of Color. If you've never heard that term, I just heard it within the past couple of months. It's a new term to me too, but Black Indigenous People of Color, BIPOC. Women's Running had 31% BIPOC, and Canadian Running had 14.75% BIPOC on the covers from the years 2009 to 2018. For Runner's World magazine, there were no people of color on their covers from 2009 to 2014. Canadian Running had no people of color on their covers from 2011 to 2013, and Women's Running had no people of color on their covers from 2009 to 2012. But are we really surprised? I know I'm not. The principal investigator for Keeping Track is a woman by the name of Dr. Francine. Uh, I think her last name is pronounced DeRoke. I will leave her information below, her website, and her email address if you want to follow up uh, with her on this topic. I'll also leave a link to the blog post on Keeping Track with all of these findings so you can read it all for yourself and draw your own conclusion on this controversial topic. There has been quite an uproar in the running community about the lack of diversity and inclusion on these runner's world covers. I've been seeing what seems like pages long Instagram posts on this. I have seen a ton of Photoshop magazine covers where real life runners are putting themselves on runner's world mag covers posting it on their page and saying you know hey runner's world wouldn't this make a nice cover for your magazine you know a person of color me a runner covering your mag i'm going to take a look at runner's world instagram page and i'm going to put this up on the screen as well so you can see why I am not surprised that their covers lack people of color. As of today, Friday, July 3rd. So their latest photo is a picture of two beautiful black women on a track, Hayward Field. Uh, What is their name? Sabrina Sutherland and Chanel Price. They look awesome, they're on the track. Um, There's photos of them working out, photos of the field. The next picture is a workout from their IGTV. The next picture is their cover for this month's issue. And this is what I find very interesting. If you take a look at the cover, uh, it features a black man whose name is PJ Thompson. They describe him as a Runner's World Plus member whatever that is. And I'm going to PJ's Instagram page and he's He's a regular runner. He has 1,121 followers. It says he's a government teacher and a RRCA runner. 
back to Rona's world page. So the picture of him is so ambiguous. This picture could be anybody. You don't see his face. All you see him doing is running across what looks like a stream of water with a bunch of rocks. I mean, don't get me wrong, the picture is dope, but I can't tell who this person is by this cover. And to me, that is really a F you to runners of color everywhere because you finally put a person of color on the cover of your magazine and we can't even see who the heck he is. I have to click on his freaking Instagram name to even know that he's a black man. I mean, give me a break. If you're gonna put a black person on the cover, put them on the cover. Let us see their face, what they look like, who they are. This is just a kick in the ass to me and it this is not acceptable at all ridiculous so keeping up with their instagram page the next picture june 26 is a picture of a local runner in new york city he is a black man he's running with his son in the stroller the next picture is another black man running this was on june 25th the next picture is another uh, IGTV video of one of their trainers. It just says she's a runner's world coach. She's a white woman. The next picture is another black woman. Mitchell Jackson wrote the article. Oh, it was actually Ahmaud Aubrey's girlfriend. Hmm. That was on June 23rd. Next photo is a trail runner. Then on June 16th, we have three women of color. They're posing like this, black power, which is great. Okay, now we're gonna go a little bit further down and you'll be able to see, I'll have this up on the screen for you watching on YouTube. If you're listening to this podcast, just go over to Runner's World Instagram page and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, person of color, white person, white person, white person, white person, person of color, two people of color, white, 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 white. Okay, this picture is what their cover from May 24th. The next person of color on their page is May 10th, Allison Felix. They had a picture of Ahmaud Aubrey on May 7th for his uh, birthday on May 8th when we ran the 2.23 miles. And then if I keep scrolling, April 28th, uh, there is a picture of uh, Ricardo Benitez, a person of color. And then keep scrolling, keep scrolling. The next person of color you see is March 11th. Keep scrolling, still scrolling, scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, the next person of color is November 22nd, 2019. So I don't see any color on their page from November 22nd to March of 2020. So that shows you the lack of diversity on their Instagram page. Now let's check out their website. Okay, their website. The first picture that I see is an article that says the pandemic couldn't stop these Paralympic champs and it is two black men running on the track. Now let's click on that article and the writer of that article is Mary Pilon, P-I-L-O-N. Let's tap on Mary's profile. Mary, there is zero information about her, so we don't know her ethnicity, if she's a runner, what she does, how long she's been writing for the magazine, nothing. Back to the homepage. Scrolling, a woman is using a foam roller, have a pair of Nike sneakers, a article on bras, more sneakers, an article on Ahmaud Aubrey by Mitchell Jackson, which we know he is a black man. Then we have more articles on coronavirus, so no people of color in that section. But let's click on the writers again. So the writer of Should I Wear a Mask While Running, Jordan Smith, let's click on her name, digital editor, she grew up in the Black Hills of South Dakota, so I'm going to assume that she is a white woman. Let's go back. Ashley Mateo, I'm gonna assume she's a people, person of color by her last name. She's one of their writers. Who else do we have on Runner's World? Selena Yeager. Now this article is, well the title picture is a woman of color, a black woman, and the writer is Celine Yeager. So yeah, she looks like a white woman, what I'm assuming. 
So just by looking at Runner's World website, I mean, they do have people of color writing on their website, but they are the minority of the writers on the website, which is part of the problem. Because if you don't have a diverse writing staff, you're not gonna have diverse stories because people tend to write about what they know, what's close to them, stuff that they can relate to and the lack of diversity in the staff reflects the articles on the website as well many people probably don't know this but runner's world is a part of the hearst digital media family now let's see some of the magazines that are included under the hearst umbrella okay we have food network magazine hdtv Cosmopolitan, which has Issa Rae on the cover, Men's Health, Women's Health, Runner's World, Country Living, Popular Mechanics, Bicycling Magazine, has a black male on the cover, Car and Driver, L, Decor, Esquire, Bazaar, House Beautiful, Marie Claire, O Magazine, Prevention, Broad, Town and Country, Veranda, Women's Day. Out of all of those magazines, only four had people of color on them. Are you getting my drift? I read a article from the New York Times. It was last month um, around the time that the world discovered the tragic murder of Ahmaud Aubrey. So this article was published on May 12th and I'm gonna link it in the show notes so that you can read it for yourself. But this article was titled, Jogging Has Always Excluded Black People. Now, in this article, they quote Running USA, which found that 10% of frequent runners identify as African American. Now, I'm African American, but I hate that the term African American is used to describe all black people in America because all black people are not African American, and this really grinds my gears. If you're from the Caribbean, if you're from Jamaica, you don't identify as African-American. You identify as Jamaican or if you're first generation, Jamaican-American, you know? So I think that certain terms need to not be used to group black people all into one. And African-American does not define every single black person in America. But according to this article, 10% of joggers identify as African-American. The article also said that the United States is sending for the very first time, this is freaking ridiculous, I can't even believe this, but they're sending black female marathoners to the Olympics in 2021 for the very first time, which is crazy. I can't believe this is the first time that black women are running for America in the marathon distance at the Olympics. So my thoughts on this whole runner's world controversy is, I really don't give a damn, I could care less. The only time that I had a Runner's World subscription was years and years ago, probably when I signed up for one of my first races, and Active.com sometimes gives complimentary magazine subscriptions. And I think I had like a three month subscription to Runner's World magazine. And once that trial was up, I canceled it because that magazine does not reflect me. I'm not gonna subscribe to a service that does not tell stories about people that look like me. If every cover that I get is a skinny white girl on the cover, I can't relate to that. I'm not a skinny white girl. I'm a black woman, 38 years old, wife, mother of two children that lives in America. A skinny white girl running in Montana is not relatable to me. So I've never given money to runner's world magazine because it's just not a relatable magazine for me they don't have my interests at best heart i'm obviously not their target demographic because there is barely anyone that looks like me on the cover of that magazine if you think about it if you're walking past a newsstand and you see a magazine with a runner on the cover That may interest me just from the term running, but if I see someone on the cover that is totally unrelatable to me, I'm gonna keep it moving because it doesn't make sense to me to spend my hard earned money on something that 
doesn't enrich my mind, body, and soul. So runner's world, I could care less. I don't follow them on social media. Well, I did follow them on social media for like a month maybe because I put up a post on social media and someone tagged them in my post and a couple other magazines. So I said, you know what? Let me follow these accounts and see what they're about. Maybe they'll have interesting content. But after a while, I saw how whitewashed those social media pages were and I unfollowed them because there's no one there that I can relate to. And don't get me wrong, I follow plenty of diverse accounts, accounts that don't look like me. I purchase from brands that are not black owned, although I do support plenty of black owned brands, but I'm a runner and I see plenty of black runners, plenty of Hispanic runners, plenty of people of color in the running community and runner's world just does not represent that. You know, what I really wanna know is how many of you runners, and some of you are my friends, we're cool with each other, but how many of you actually pay for a subscription to Runner's World Magazine? I'm interested to know that. So if you pay for a subscription to Runner's World Magazine, hit me up in my DMs or leave a comment below on YouTube of this video and just let me know. I'm very curious to the answer to that question. Do you frequent their website? Do you read their articles? I wanna know how involved you actually are in runner's world to be in such an uproar that they're not including people of color on their covers. Are you invested in this magazine? The other thing I wanted to discuss on this topic was a New York City based runner named Adam Runs NYC. That's his Instagram handle. He put up a post, what date was this? It was two days ago, so it was on uh, July 1st. And his post says, I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. I spoke with runner-in-chief at Runner's World Magazine. Now, in this post, he says his request, remember, these are his requests. He doesn't speak for the entire black running community or the entire running community of people of color. These are his requests. So he says at least 32% of annual covers should feature people of color, which is two out of six, fat chance of that. <laughs> Create an advisory board with various community leaders, pro athletes and coaches to know what's happening on the ground and keep runner's world accountable. Mm -hmm. Have a safe workplace for employees to voice their opinion about the diversity of runner's world through a structured forum. Now, Runner's World's response was that they will feature a black athlete, PJ Thompson, on their latest issue, which I showed earlier. You can't even see his face. Sorry, PJ, but they did you wrong there. Unless that's what you wanted. If that's what you wanted and you're listening, let me know. But that's not what I would have wanted. They said moving forward, there will be more equity in covers with people of color. What does that mean? More equity in covers. Runner's World is committed to have fair representation of people of color. With six covers, that should be at least two, if not more. Generally, yes, we will be making sure covers are now represented by all people of color or else we will be held responsible. They also sent an audit of content and business partners is currently being worked on to identify groups that are not being represented. More diverse staff across the board when hiring freeze due to COVID is lifted, donating advertising space to racial equality, community and pro running advisory board to begin by 2021, a written statement in the next issue and sooner on the website. So that's what Runner's World said that they're willing to do moving forward. We will see if they live up to these promises. So far, they, they've lived up to the first one having uh, PJ Thompson on the cover. <laughs> whoop de doo <laughs> I didn't want this show to just be one-sided of me giving my opinion on why I just don't give a damn about Runner's World magazine. So I asked a few runners out there to uh, let me know their thoughts on this whole controversy. So 
First up, I have Amanda, who was a New York City-based runner. She was actually on my show in the very beginning uh, on the episode titled Runners Turn Triathletes. I will link that episode below so you can go back and listen to it. So I'm going to play Amanda's audio and you can hear what she has to say about this situation. Hey, Kim. Chiming in, it's Amanda from the Run Community in NYC. Wanted to share my thoughts uh, quickly with the Run Wave podcast on the Runner's World magazine issue that's trending on social media right now. Uh, You know, Runner's World, Runner's World issue with their lack of diversity is something I've noticed for years. I first noticed the magazine years ago, waiting in a grocery store aisle, and later only subscribed to the magazine because I received a year free and uh, basically for purchasing something. However, I didn't bother to renew or pay for this, the subscription because they never showcased any black people or other people of color on the mag. Um, you know, there's so many distance runners from pros like Med, Elu, Kipchoge, Worknesh to Mary Kitney to your neighborhood black distance runners and your local run clubs around the globe. So it's not like black distance or black runners do not exist. They often do not get the same media attention and opportunities as white runners representation matters more people of color being featured and added to the cover of magazines or news articles is important to show we exist in that space and also being given the same opportunity as well as motivate and encourage other black people to join long distance running or running in general triathlons and many other sports that often only showcase white people competing this is really what rallying and protesting going on is is about you know it's about equality of rights and opportunities and representation this country once never had a black president and that was very hard to envision but you know since barack obama did serve that's something that we actually see was reality and we can believe in so for us to move the needle forward in you know forward in inclusivity we really need to include black people in the conversation on the cover of magazines you know in news articles and if honestly if runners world doesn't want to acknowledge that they have not been inclusive then there's no need to keep asking for them to represent us you know create our own see now i totally agree with amanda that representation does matter and black people deserve the cover of these magazines but are we going to keep pandering and begging runners world to put us on the cover or are they going to do the right thing and just do it hmm Next up is an audio clip from Jesse. Jesse is a tri-state based area runner. He is a member of Black Men Run New York City and the New York City Way. So let's hear what Jesse has to say. All right, how I feel about Runner's World. Um, The Runner's World magazine, I feel like for our culture, us being, you know, black and brown and Hispanic or not. I don't feel like it matters, honestly. Um, I feel like it's cool if we are featured in articles like that. But on the flip side, you know, let's continue as our own culture to build each other up, to uplift each other, to look out for each other and just start our own thing. Um, The world we live in now is pretty much accessible to all avenues. I feel like you know, from certain points, we have a tendency to want to look to larger companies and magazines for the recognition. Um, I'm of the mindset where it's cool, but it doesn't really matter. I think what matters most is the clubs, the crews, the folks that are out there putting together this movement for black and brown, you know, and all types of color folks should be the ones to bring each other to the forefront. By that, I mean, we have access to everything to start our own digital magazine, to start our own run shows, to start our run, own run po- podcasts, such as the Runwave and other podcasts that are up there, out there. Um, I think it's cool that we're all doing that. I think we should all focus on doing that and just look out for each other and just uplift each other rather than look to these large predominantly white magazines, websites for recognition. It's cool, yes. It's another door that opens up for each other, yes. But at the same time, we have to continue to look out for each other. 
we have to focus on each other and just you know build our own brands up and the way we do that is just by continuing to give each other shout 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 each other out to build our own brands up to have our own you know digital magazines to have our own social media sites and you know as the following becomes bigger then you you know those larger magazines will eventually come calling but do we really need them you know what i mean so um i feel like it's cool that everybody's stepping up and saying hey we should feature this person on run his run world magazine but honestly we could do that ourselves you know i think everyone tends to follow a trend that doesn't need to be followed and we should just make our own lanes and that's what we should continue to focus on rather than you know want to start our own move with other entities let's make our own entities let's focus on each other let's build our brands up and let's continue to put ourselves out there let's you know create our own movements for all cultures of color black and brown hispanic spanish everything every you know every culture that you know that's out there other than white do you notice a trend here amanda and jesse both said the same thing we need to build our own we don't need runners world we are the culture we are the runners enough people have posted about this issue people with large followings that can actually do something about it you have graphic designers you have writers let's come together and collaborate and make our own digital magazine we don't need runners world we don't need to make fake covers of ourselves on their covers we can make our own covers we don't need runners world magazine they need us remember that Next up, we have a clip from Raphael. He is a Arizona-based runner. He is the national co-captain of Black Men Run, and he's also the director of marketing. So let's hear what Raph has to say. Hello, I'm Rafael Ortiz, national co-captain and director of marketing for Black Men Run, as well as the captain of the Phoenix chapter. So why the big fuss? Does it really matter? Or is it just pandering, as some might say? Well, personally, I think that in this climate where people are more aware of the importance of amplifying black voices and having more representation in various industries and corporations, the front cover does matter because it helps to speak to a broader audience and it shows the diversity in the sport of running. I will say Runner's World has gotten better with their stories, particularly and unfortunately after the Ahmaud Arbery tragedy. Now, as a disclaimer, I personally have been quoted in a recent article about the Run for Justice Virtual 5K that was a recent partnership between Black Men Run and Latinos Run. Black Men Run was also featured in a story in 2017 and mentioned in a couple of articles about black running organizations in the U.S. So they're doing a better job of amplifying our voices and featuring more runners of color as of late. But the front cover shows an even greater commitment to being more inclusive in the sport of running. It might attract those who are not runners currently, but happen to be at a gas station or bookstore or checkout line. And all of a sudden they see someone that looks like them on the front cover and they become intrigued by it. And that's what representation does. And if more people see themselves in the sport, hopefully it leads to them wanting to try running, thereby increasing the number of black runners and helping to ultimately improve our health as a people. And that to me is why the cover matters. Raphael made some really good points and I mentioned this earlier. If you're walking by a magazine stand and you don't see yourself reflected on that cover, you may just keep it moving. So yes, the cover matters. Yes, Runner's World has featured people of color inside their magazine they've quoted people of color Raphael said he was quoted inside the magazine but the cover is still important but like I said do we need runner's world to put us on their covers no 
The last submission that I have is from Tasha of Black Girl SOS, my fellow Bronx native. And uh, if you remember, she was on my Running Wild Black Collaborative episode, part two. We had an all podcast host roundtable discussion. And if you heard that show, you know Tasha keeps it all the way real. So let's hear what Tasha has to say on this topic. This is Snobby from Black Girl SOS. And just here's my thoughts on the whole put me on the cover of Runner's World. Fuck Runner's World. Bottom line, point blank, period. They know what they're doing. We don't need to tell them. We don't need to apply pressure. They're not acting from this space of, you know, naivete. They, they don't not know what they're doing. This is a magazine dedicated to a sport that we dominate in every distance, in every distance. That's a known fact. <laughs> this is not a secret. So the fact that they don't have us on the cover is because it does not play into the narrative or the story they're trying to tell. That's it. They don't not see us. They see us and they are actively, purposely ignoring us. I don't, I'm not begging you to pick me, pick me. I don't care. I don't need to be acknowledged by them. I don't need to be seen by them. I don't fuck with them. I just continued my um, subscription a very long time ago. I encourage you all to do the same agree with Tasha 100%. And look, that's another person that said they've discontinued their Runner's World subscription due to their lack of diversity and inclusivity. So there you have it. Other opinions on this topic that are not mine. Some are similar to mine, some are similar, but a little bit different. But you know, everyone feels strongly about this issue. We all know that the cover matters. That's not up for debate. But does Runner's World care enough about people of color to include them on their covers? That's the question that we are looking for answers on. Before I close out this episode, I just want to give you a couple resources that we as people of color can look to and read, subscribe to, and gain knowledge from that actually speaks to us, that actually represents us. So it was very difficult to find another running magazine that is catered to black runners. But I did find a website called The Undefeated. It is owned by ESPN, but this website is actually really dope. I'm gonna put it up on the screen right here. And if you're at home listening, you can just go to theundefeated.com to check out the website. But this website has articles all about black and brown people of color. They're talking today about uh, the top basketball recruit, McCor Maker, and his choice to go to an HBCU, Howard University. Uh, they have the story about Maya Moore, um, who used her platform to get a uh, gentleman out of jail. There's an article on Frederick Douglass. There's an article on the protests where uh, cyclists were riding through the city. There's just so much on this site. Even the story about uh, the news found in Bubba Wallace's garage for NASCAR. Now, they are lacking though stories about running. Now, this could be because we're in the middle of a pandemic and there's like nothing going on really and running right now. So I don't know what the site looks like in ordinary times, but this is a site that is full of people of color. And if we wanna be represented on digital media, send your information to this site. Hit the contact us button on their site. They have a list of everyone's name, position, everything is accessible on this website, The Undefeated. So I highly, highly encourage you to check it out and make it a part of your uh, everyday sports reading. This next one is not a website, but it is a Instagram page and it's called Pull Up For Change. So exactly how I just said it, it's spelled out. I'll put it up on the screen right here and you can just go on Instagram if you're listening to check out the page, but 
page is run by Sharon. She is the owner of Oma Beauty, which is a black owned beauty brand. So go support them if you're a lover of beauty like I am. Uh, the brand is dope and you know, the owner is pretty amazing. So she created this page to hold brands accountable and let's hold runner's world accountable. Go on to pull up for a change and start tagging runner's world in the comments. You can go to any of their posts and talk about runner's world. And this is how Sharon finds these companies and starts adding them and makes them tell us their diversity numbers. A problem that I see with Runner's World is their staff is probably just not that diverse. So if you don't have any people of color or minimum people of color on your staff, it's hard for that one person to stand up and say this is not right and if you have no people of color on your staff no one's going to tell you that what you're doing is not right so go check out pull up for change go on any of the posts and tag runners world ask sharon to put runners world on notice we want to know what their diversity numbers are what are the percentages of their staff how many people of color on their are on their staff how many white people are on their staff asian whatever women minorities we want to know what their staff numbers look like so definitely check out pull up for a change it is a great instagram page and they're doing great work to make big brands show accountability and diversify their work staff which is needed I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Runway Podcast. This was an important topic. It's something that's going on right now in the running community, which really needed to be addressed. I want to thank all of my audio contributors, Amanda, Jesse, Raphael, and Tasha. Thank you so much for submitting your thoughts on this runner's world fiasco. It's not a controversy. It's a fiasco. <laughs> But again, thank you everyone for tuning in and I will see you on the next show. Later.